Joseph Flaherty, 1941-2024, known professionally as Joe Flaherty, was an American actor, writer, and comedian who left an indelible mark on the world of comedy. Early Life and Finding His Footing Born in Pittsburgh in 1941, Flaherty's comedic journey began after serving in the Air Force. He honed his acting skills in dramatic theater before venturing into the world of comedy. Second City and SCTV, launching a stellar career. In 1969, Flaherty's comedic talents found a home at Chicago's Second City Theater. Here, he rubbed shoulders with future comedy stars like John Belushi and Harold Ramis. He then moved to Toronto and became a founding member of the Toronto Second City Troupe. This led to his most iconic role, a stint on the legendary sketch comedy show SCTV from 1976 to 1984. Characters like Big Jim McBob, Count Floyd, and Guy Caballero cemented his place in comedy history. Beyond SCTV, a legacy of laughter. SCTV's ending didn't mark the end of Flaherty's comedic reign. He graced the silver screen in cult classic films like Back to the Future Part II and Happy Gilmore leaving audiences in stitches with his memorable portrayals. He continued to find success on television, starring in shows like Freaks and Geeks, Harold Weir, Anyone, and Police Academy, the series. Nurturing the Next Generation and Final Curtain Flaherty's passion extended beyond performing. From 2004, he served as an artist in residence at Humber College, sharing his comedic wisdom with aspiring performers. Sadly, the comedic world lost a legend in 2024 when Joe Flaherty passed away at the age of 82. A legacy of laughter and inspiration. Joe Flaherty's comedic genius and dedication to the craft leave behind a lasting legacy. His iconic characters, unforgettable performances, and mentorship of future generations solidify his place as a true comedy legend. Barbara Baldivin, A Life in Entertainment, 1938 to 2024. Barbara Baldivin, 1938 to 2024, was an American actress and casting director who left her mark on both sides of the camera. A career on screen. Born in 1938, Baldivin's acting career began in the late 1960s. While she primarily worked in dramatic roles, many will remember her for her appearances in the iconic science fiction series, Star Trek. She played the recurring role of Angela Martin and even made a cameo in the series finale as Lieutenant Lisa. Beyond Star Trek. Baldivin's talent wasn't confined to the Starship Enterprise. She graced the screens in shows like Adam-12 and Medical Center, captivating audiences with her diverse portrayals. A shift behind the scenes. The 1970s marked a shift in Baldivin's career. She segued from acting to casting, leveraging her keen eye for talent. She worked as a casting assistant and then rose to become the casting director for shows like Trapper John, M.D., and the legendary soap opera Dynasty. Full circle, from actress to mentor. In 2010, Baldivin's career came full circle. She joined the faculty at Don Wells Film Actors Boot Camp, sharing her vast experience and knowledge with aspiring actors. Interestingly, Baldivin met her husband, Joseph D'Agosta, while working on the original Star Trek series, where he served as a casting director. A legacy of versatility. Barbara Baldivin's passing in 2024 left a void in the entertainment industry. Her ability to excel as both an actress and a casting director showcases her versatility and dedication to her craft. She will be remembered for her captivating performances and her role in shaping the careers of other talented individuals. Barbara Rush, A Life on Stage and Screen, 1927-2024 Barbara Rush, 1927-2024, was an American actress whose career spanned over seven decades. She left her mark on both the big and small screens, captivating audiences with her talent and versatility. Early beginnings and rise to stardom. Born in 1927, Rush's passion for acting led her to the stage. She honed her craft at renowned venues like the Libero Theater and the Pasadena Playhouse before catching the eye of Paramount Pictures. Her screen debut came in 1950, and soon after, she co-starred in the classic sci-fi film, When Worlds Collide. Her performance in It Came From Outer Space, 1953, earned her a Golden Globe Award for Most Promising Newcomer, Female, solidifying her status as a rising star. Hollywood Success and Beyond Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, Rush graced the silver screen in a variety of films. She starred alongside Hollywood legends like James Mason, Dean Martin, and Paul Newman in critically acclaimed movies like 
Bigger Than Life, The Young Lions, and The Young Philadelphians. Her talent wasn't confined to a single genre. She effortlessly portrayed strong-willed women, love interests, and even the occasional villainess. A career that endured. While film was a major part of her career, Rush never abandoned her love for theater. She consistently returned to the stage, earning prestigious awards like the Sarah Siddons Award for her dramatic achievements. She even brought her one-woman show, A Woman of Independent Means, to Broadway. Television also became a prominent platform for Rush's talents. She became a regular on shows like Peyton Place, and guest starred in numerous television movies and miniseries, including The Bionic Woman. Later years saw her grace the screens of soap operas like All My Children and heartwarming family dramas like Seventh Heaven. A life well lived. Barbara Rush passed away in 2024 at the age of 97. She leaves behind a remarkable legacy as an actress who excelled on both stage and screen. Her ability to portray a wide range of characters with depth and conviction cemented her place as a Hollywood legend. Rob Kamen, a kickboxing legend with a complex journey, 1960 to 2024. Rob, the Dutchman, Cayman, 1960 to 2024, was a Dutch kickboxing and Muay Thai champion whose life transcended the ring. Feared for his low kicks and celebrated for his dominance, Cayman's story is one of athletic triumph and personal challenges. Early life and a shift in focus. Born in Amsterdam in 1960, Cayman's athletic journey began on the football field, playing for the AFC Ajax youth team. However, his heart wasn't in team sports. At 16, he discovered a passion for martial arts, initially training in the Indonesian style of Pentjak Silat. Witnessing a kickboxing match ignited a new interest, leading him to Muay Thai and kickboxing under the tutelage of Lucien Carbin and Jan Plas. A champion emerges. By 1980, Cayman had become a force to be reckoned with in the Netherlands. His powerful low kicks, earning him the nickname, Mr. Low Kick, became his signature move and a key factor in his numerous victories. A knockout win against Blinky Rodriguez marked a turning point, propelling him onto the international stage. He even ventured into Thailand, the heart of Muay Thai, and emerged victorious against local champions. Beyond the ring, Cayman's ambitions extended beyond the ring. Towards the end of his athletic career, he pursued acting, appearing in films alongside Jean-Claude Van Damme, including Legionnaire and Maximum Risk. He also shared the screen with Dennis Rodman and Mickey Rourke in Double Team. A legacy remembered. Rob Kamen's life wasn't without its complexities. In 1985, he faced a legal hurdle, serving time for a bank robbery conviction. Despite this challenge, his achievements in the ring remain undeniable. Kamen's nine kickboxing and Muay Thai world titles stand as a testament to his dedication and fighting spirit. He passed away in 2024 at the age of 63 leaving behind a legacy of martial arts excellence and a life that transcended the boundaries of the sport. Tatiana Konyuhova. A life dedicated to the stage and screen, 1931-2024. Tatiana Konyuhova, 1931-2024, was a Soviet actress who left an indelible mark on Russian cinema. Throughout her career, she captivated audiences with her talent and dedication to her craft. An early spark and overcoming doubts. Born in Tashkent in 1931, Kanyuhova's passion for acting ignited early. Despite her father's reservations, her determination led her to Moscow's prestigious VGIK Film Institute, workshop of Boris Bibikov and Olga Pajova, in 1949. There, she excelled academically and theatrically, proving her father wrong and quickly catching the attention of film directors. A flourishing career. Even as a second-year student, Kanyuhova made her film debut in Alexander Ruse, May Night, or The Drowned Maiden. After graduating in 1955, she had a brief stint at the Maui Theatre before joining the National Film Actors Theatre from 1956 to 1992. Her talent was widely recognized, leading to her appointment on the Committee of the Lenin Prize in Literature and Art in 1964. She also served on the Central Committee of the Trade Union of Workers of Culture from 1969. A legacy of achievement. Kanyuhova's dedication to her craft was further solidified by the prestigious honor of People's Artist of the RSFSR in 1991. Her extensive filmography undoubtedly includes memorable performances that continue to entertain audiences. Sadly, the world lost this talented actress in 2024 at the age of 92. A life remembered. Tatiana Kanyuhova's life is a testament to the power of pursuing one's passion. 
her exceptional talent and unwavering dedication to acting solidify her place as a respected figure in Russian cinema. John, Captain Crunch, colon, a hard-hitting legend, 1948 to 2024. John Michael Colon, better known as Captain Crunch, 1948 to 2024, was an American football linebacker who left his mark on the Miami Dolphins and the NFL. A football journey. Born in 1948, Colon's talent for football blossomed at Berry High School in Hoover, Alabama. He then went on to play collegiately for the Auburn Tigers before being drafted by the Miami Dolphins in 1970. For eight seasons, Colin donned the aqua and orange, striking fear into the hearts of opposing offenses with his hard-hitting style. This tenacity earned him the memorable nickname, Captain Crunch. A part of history, Colin's career intersected with one of the most iconic moments in NFL history, the Sea of Hands, game. During the 1974 playoff game between the Dolphins and the Oakland Raiders, a desperate pass by Ken Stabler ended up in a chaotic scramble near the end zone. Colin, amidst a swarm of players, nearly intercepted the ball, but ultimately landed in the hands of Oakland's Clarence Davis, securing a victory for the Raiders and ending the Dolphins' dynasty. Beyond the field. After retiring from football, Colin settled in Birmingham, Alabama, with his family. He continued his passion for the game by working with his son at Colin Financial Team. He even shared his football wisdom by penning a book titled, The Greatest Team, A Playbook for Champions. A legacy remembered. John, Captain Crunch, Colin passed away in 2024 at the age of 76. He leaves behind a legacy of fierce play, a pivotal moment in NFL history, and a dedication to the sport that extended beyond the field. His contributions to the Miami Dolphins and his iconic nickname ensure his place in football lore. John Barth, a postmodern mastermind, 1930 to 2024. John Barth, 1930 to 2024 was an American writer who left an undeniable mark on the literary landscape. Pioneering postmodern and metafictional fiction, he explored innovative forms and challenged traditional storytelling. Early life and literary beginnings. Born in Maryland in 1930, Barth's artistic side emerged early. He dabbled in music before pursuing a writing path. After graduating from Johns Hopkins University, he embarked on a teaching career while nurturing his literary talents. The 1950s saw the publication of his early works, including his thesis novel, The Hallmarks of a Literary Trailblazer. The 1960s cemented Barth's reputation as a literary innovator. Works like The Sot Weed Factor and Giles Goat Boy showcased his unique blend of postmodernism and metafiction. He masterfully wove intricate plots, challenged narrative conventions, and incorporated satire to create thought-provoking stories. His collection, Lost in the Funhouse, further solidified his place as a pioneer of experimental fiction. This period also brought him recognition, culminating in a shared National Book Award for Chimera in 1973. A life dedicated to literature. Barth's dedication to his craft extended beyond writing. He actively engaged with the theoretical aspects of fiction, influencing the literary world with his essay, The Literature of Exhaustion. While some interpreted it as a declaration of the novel's demise, Barth emphasized the need for new directions in storytelling. His later essay, The Literature of Replenishment, served as a clarification of his views. A Legacy of Literary Innovation John Barth passed away in 2024 at the age of 93. He leaves behind a rich literary legacy. His exploration of form, his playful experiments with narrative, and his influence on the postmodern movement solidify his place as a major American author. Jerry Bob Abbott, a musical legacy spanning genres, 1942 to 2024. Jerry Bob Abbott, 1942 to 2024, was an American musician who wore many hats throughout his career. He was a country music songwriter and record producer, but his most significant influence came through his sons, the late heavy metal legends Vinnie Paul and Dimebag Daryl Abbott, of Pantera fame. Early Musical Pursuits Born in Abilene, Texas, in 1942, Abbott's musical journey began at a young age. He started playing piano at 8 and transitioned to guitar by 15. He honed his skills in local bands and nightclubs while pursuing a business degree in college. In 1973, his passion for music took a new turn when he landed a sound engineer role at a recording studio. Guiding the Rise of Pantera Abbott's life intertwined with heavy metal when he married and had two sons, Vinnie Paul and Dimebag Daryl. These sons would go on to co-found Pantera, 
a band that redefined the genre. Jerry Bob became their first manager and played a crucial role in their formative years. He even produced their early albums at his Pantago Sound Studio, a testament to his dedication to their musical success. These albums, released on his own label Metal Magic Records under the alias Jerry Eldon, laid the groundwork for Pantera's rise to prominence. Beyond heavy metal, as Pantera secured a major label deal, Abbott stepped back from producing the band, although their recording connection remained. His musical influence, however, extended far beyond heavy metal. He successfully transitioned into country music songwriting, securing credits with renowned artists like Emmy Lou Harris and Freddie Fender. He even established a new studio in Nashville, AB Tracks Recording, further solidifying his diverse musical contributions. A life filled with music. Abbott's personal life was marked by both joy and tragedy. He lost his wife Carolyn in 1999 and tragically, both his sons in separate incidents, Dimebag Daryl in 2004 and Vinnie Paul in 2018. He passed away himself in 2024 at the age of 81. A legacy remembered. Jerry Bob Abbott's life serves as a testament to the versatility and influence a single person can have on the music world. From nurturing the talents of his sons to forging a successful career as a songwriter, his impact is undeniable. He leaves behind a legacy that bridges the worlds of country music and heavy metal, forever linked to the iconic band Pantera. Casey Benjamin, a musical chameleon who bridged genres, 1978 to 2024. Casey Benjamin, 1978 to 2024, was an American musician who defied categorization. A saxophonist, alto and soprano, vocoderist, keyboardist, producer, and songwriter, he left his mark on a wide range of musical styles. A wellspring of talent. Born in South Jamaica, Queens, New York City in 1978, Benjamin's musical journey began early. He picked up the saxophone at the age of eight and honed his skills at renowned institutions like Fiorello H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and Performing Arts. He further refined his artistry at the New School for Jazz and Contemporary Music, where fatefully, he met Robert Glasper. Genre-bending collaborations. Benjamin's collaborations transcended genre boundaries. He was a member of the Robert Glasper Experiment, a band that blurred the lines between jazz, hip-hop, and R&B, and even secured a Grammy Award for their album, Black Radio. He wasn't limited to jazz fusion, though. He was one half of the funk-pop new wave duo Heavy, showcasing his versatility. A sought-after collaborator. The list of artists who sought out Benjamin's talent is a testament to his versatility. From jazz greats like Roy Hargrove and Betty Carter to hip-hop icons like Kendrick Lamar, Nas, and Q-Tip, he seamlessly blended his skills into diverse musical landscapes. He even crossed paths with rock legends like Vernon Reed and Melvin Gibbs. His collaborative spirit extended to R&B stars like Mary J. Blige and John Legend, and pop superstars like Beyoncé. A life cut short. Tragically, Casey Benjamin passed away in 2024 at the young age of 45. The cause of death remains undetermined, although he was reportedly recovering from surgery at the time. A legacy of musical exploration. Despite his untimely passing, Casey Benjamin's legacy lives on. His ability to navigate various musical styles with such mastery solidified him as a true musical chameleon. His influence on jazz, hip-hop, R&B, and beyond will undoubtedly continue to inspire future generations of musicians. You've already provided a great summary of Lee Siegfried's life. Here's a slightly rephrased version to avoid redundancy. Lee, Crazy Cabby, Siegfried, a radio personality with a colorful career, 1968 to 2024. Lee Siegfried, 1968 to 2024, better known by his on-air persona, Crazy Cabby, was an American disc jockey who left his mark on radio stations in both Minneapolis and New York City. Early career and the birth of Crazy Cabby. Born Lee Anthony Moroshek in 1968, Siegfried's radio journey began in Minneapolis. He first gained recognition as a frequent caller named Cabby on The Andy Savage Show. This moniker would later become his signature stage name. His talent caught the attention of the high-rated KQRS morning show, where he eventually landed a spot. Faked news and a new chapter in New York. A controversial stunt involving fabricated news about NFL star Brett Favre led to Siegfried's dismissal from KQRS. However, his radio career wasn't over. He found a new home in New York City, broadcasting on 92.3K Rock and becoming a regular guest on The Howard Stern Show. 
His outrageous personality and witty banter made him a popular figure on the show. Facing challenges and looking ahead. In 2020, Siegfried was diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome, a debilitating nerve disorder. Despite the challenges, he remained determined and even shared his story and future plans for a podcast during a 2021 interview. A radio legacy. Sadly, Lee Siegfried passed away in 2024 at the age of 55. He leaves behind a legacy of entertainment and a career that thrived on his unique on-air persona and unfiltered personality.